Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, we, we added a, a, a merit, which was a spaceship merit. So um, how many dots you have in that is how many dots you can put into building your own right. starship. Yeah, one of them. So like spacer and uh, smuggler might not work or just taking that. It wouldn't work for the base game. You'd have to completely take that out. Yeah, there's definitely professions yeah. that wouldn't work in a non-Star Wars setting. Yeah. yeah. Or space setting. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, the starship merit. So the way it's working is generally you're getting two dots in a profession anytime you would get one dot of something else. And then as a group, you can pool all your points of this, kind of like the uh, layer um, background. The haven. For, he, haven. That's what it is. The haven for vampires. Yeah. Your group pulls it together and uh, you have to have enough resource dots to back up every dot of starship to at the end. Or, or the highest. The highest. Sorry, the yes. The highest. highest. Yeah. The highest of any of the categories. So, it, does, it, it doesn't have to be resources. It can also be uh, status. Status or oh. if you have a back or oh. contact, whatever. Or, uh, I think it's just the two resources. And status. status and resources. Oh, okay. In the end, you get your pool of dots and you distribute them between size, propulsion, propulsion defense, and, and, equipment. and equipment. And you, uh, each of those categories has subcategories as well. Like that's probably the least elegant in the end of our systems we've added. Like it's not just a really simple add-on. This one's actually more depth and complex. But because of that, you can build some really cool. Millennium Falcon, uh, Outrider, you know, whatever the crap you want to, Serenity kind of style ships. Yeah, and that, I, I take full responsibility for the complexity of the Starship Merit, because I love designing Starships. <laughs> the D20 and Saga both had segments in their Starship books on how you can design a Starship, and I played for days with those. And weeks, yeah, uh, forever and ever and ever. And pulled out graph paper and uh, uh, yes, I have actually I have drew them out. Yes, deck by deck. Yeah, room by room. Yeah, I have sort of a, a an illness for that. <laughs> so I really did. Uh, and in 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 this merit system that the, the Starship designer that I came up with, I tried to strike a balance between complexity and ease. Yeah. Um. And while there's a lot of uh, tables and things that you do have to go through, there's not a whole bunch of number crunching that you have to do. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. The, the You kind of just pick what you're wanting generally, and then like it's not like you're having to consult chart A to go to chart B to do thing in section C. Yeah. It's, it's basically... Uh, it's kind of each it's segment kind of like, is its own thing. It's, it's like making your own character, another character. Yeah, and that's another reason why I wasn't too beat up about it being complex. Because in many sci-fi genre stuff, the ship is another character. Right. The Serenity is as much. It's, ninth. Yeah, it's as much a character as anyone else on the show. And the Enterprise gets more love probably than anybody, any single crew member. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There aren't a whole lot of crew members on that uh, opening crawl for Star Wars, or Star, or Star Trek, the uh, original series, but they do show the Enterprise flying past a lot. Yep, well, and, I mean, let's not forget the Starship porn that is the first 12 minutes of the motion picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, we said at the beginning of, the, of every episode, warning, this is not made for kids. <laughs> we, we did borrow that line. I did. <laughs> It, it's just so clearly and concisely tells people what they need to know. Yep, you got to give it up for Jerry Holkins. So what about you guys? As far as have, have you gotten any? Because I posted this thing on our Facebook page asking for questions, and uh, it didn't get a whole lot of interaction. But I did get some private comments and questions through Facebook friends and stuff that were listeners. And I was wondering if you guys got anything like that. I did not know. I have I have several friends who are promising to listen to it in the future, but um, yeah, I can several of them are procrastinators. So yeah, we'll get around to it when we're not busy. So when are you not busy? Well, this weekend. So you're gonna listen to it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just not that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, 
I will say uh, I received a compliment on the quality of your voice, Tim. Okay. You told me that before, and it's like, I'm not knowing where that's going, so I <laughs> wait, wait your cue. This kind of reminds me of uh, all the friend, fans of Critical Hit think one of the players is, is definitely the uh, most attractive of, of them, just from the sound of his voice. And then they meet him in person. Well, meet any of them in person. I mean, I'm throwing myself in there with that group, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the gag in, uh, this is Spinal Tap. I think it's Spinal Tap. Handsome Dan. Uh, yeah. How are you? <laughs> You're Handsome Dan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, your name is Dan, but you certainly yeah. aren't handsome. Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when we went, when we were eating, at one point you had a question. Oh yeah, how'd you like me flipping that over to go over to uh, the resistance? Did you see that coming? Not really, no. Um, yeah, no, I didn't see that coming at all, really. I thought you guys would either, yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't know exactly how you guys would roll it because, I mean, one never knows for sure, right? We but weren't expecting us to blow up the pacifists, <laughs> who were legitimately pacifists. Yeah, that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> Although I think it shocked you that the ship blew up. Yes. Yeah. The, the way, well, here's the thing. Like, when we were flying out, all of a sudden the ship's taking evasive maneuvers. Like, we're under the impression we're under fire already. Yeah. Um, we find out, okay, no, they haven't fired on us yet, but they're telling us, Either surrender these items and we'll, we'll pay you for them, or we'll we'll fight you. And it was like, okay, so apparently these guys are are ready to back up their claims, and we can't really trust them because they're threatening us with force. So we were not expecting their ship to go down like a punk, and it did. Oh yeah, but I, I would like to to comment that I, I was sitting there really desperately thinking about where my character would be on this. And I did say it in the episode that, like, Grawlock was, was not happy with somebody telling him what he is or is not going to do. Yeah. And so he was both upset at Zidan and not really interested in giving in to these guys here, which is why he was sitting at the airlock, strongly tempted to just walk in there and take their whole crew out one at a time. But, you know, there's always that chance that they have a... Which I was wondering for a moment if that's what you were going to do. <laughs> like, uh, once I was like, that you have a good seal, and then they open it, I was expecting to be like, chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was tempted to, but I didn't go that uh, far. I'll be back. Because on the one hand, they were willing to pay us. And if everyone was going to be like, well, hey, hey, you know what, we can get paid here right now, rather than having to... And he even Probably. showed you the credits. Yeah, I wasn't buying that. Especially he, once he showed the sleight of hand thing. I was like, oh yeah. He's going to be like, oh here it is. And then poof, switch it with something else. Or who knows how much it's actually worth. Yep. So. So. I want to make a quick comment on some of my NPCs. Because some of them were inspired. Viva Early. As I said at the outset. In that first Star Wars game the two people that we're going to betray or not betray. One of them was a human named Beverly. Hmm. So I wanted to take a piece of that into this. Mm -hmm. So that's where her name came from. The leader of the pacifists, I based loosely on Penn Jillette. Yeah, I caught that. And Richard Dawkins. And then, of course, there was the, the family member of Lando Calrissian. Oh yeah, you said that guy was Billy D. Williams. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm trying to think of uh, some other ones. I think Gail's name I took inspiration from uh, the Wizard of Oz. Hmm. Dorothy Gale. Oh. A lot of the, a lot of them, I will admit to, uh, basically looking in the uh, suggested 
names in the yeah. Alien anthology, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, several of them I basically took that syllable and that syllable, yeah, and combined them uh, rather than just copying them wholesale out of the book. But yeah, I mean, when you're naming 26 NPCs, <laughs> yeah, uh, and only a few of them are the same species, yeah. And I wanted, yeah, I, yeah, I had quite a bit of fun coming up with the crews and sort of how, how they work together and stuff. That was fun. Which sort of leads me into what I wanted to steer us into, which is why we decided on the format that we decided. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we're going to play one game a season, and then that's, that game is done, and we're on to the next one. Oh, right. And it's largely because that's the way we play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is very much true. I, I, I would say probably 80% of gamers play somewhat akin to this. Like, there are those rare groups out there that have been playing the same game for 20 years, but I would say that those are generally the exception to the rule. Well, I mean, Critical Role, that's the same campaign for three years for them. Which, it, like I said, I, I think that's the exception. I mean, I think the longest campaign I've ever been in personally was a two-year campaign with the same character. Hmm. Yeah, see, uh, I mean, there was a period of time uh, several years back. It was basically just me and one other guy that were playing. Um, one of us would be GM, the other one's the player. We would play four weeks on a game before one of us had a, an idea. Uh, or we, we would find a new book. Like, oh man, I found this system. Oh, okay, let's try that out. Or we would, we would watch, watch a movie or read a book or something. It's like, oh man, I just had an idea for this story. And it, it, it's, okay, let's play that. To the point where we brought in a few more people and uh, they went through that cycle with us and they were like, time out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys can change, can shift gears like that. Okay, fine. But you need to at least bring the story to a <laughs> close. We need to at least finish this story before we move on to the next one. I need closure. I need to be able to, to tie this in a bow. And in a place that maybe we can come back to it later, but that you're not just, you know, expecting to change the channel to your favorite TV show and it's not that show anymore. Yeah. And so we got better about it. I had a buddy in high school, and we basically did the same thing. I've been, the, the group, the gaming I, I came from, we, we definitely switched games fairly often, but that re, the, like what prevented that from becoming that kind of case is that we had three, day, three days a week we were gaming. And it wasn't always the same people, but there was three days a week that there was different games going on. So it would yeah. be like the so-and-so's night, the so, this guy's night, the other person's night. And once they finished their story, or at least the group broke up, and so, you know, whatever, it's yeah. new people, then they would switch stories. Yeah. But a, most of the games came to some kind of ending point in those games. Uh, yeah, see, at the worst time of my ADD, that was not the case. <laughs> uh, we would be in the middle of an adventure, or the middle of a mission, and it's like, we'd be talking over dinner, and it's like, hey, I had this idea for, for this kind of a game. And it was like, okay, yeah, let's play that. So, yeah, I mean, it was like... Yeah, so we decided that that would be sort of our our hook for you guys, the audience. You don't have to listen to hundreds of hours to catch up. You can pick up at any season or jump around, do whatever you want. Fall into whatever GM you enjoy more or fall into whatever story type you like more. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the other thing. We wanted to to play with systems... uh, and explore strange new universes. Step out of our comfort zone and see something new. Which brings us to the announcement of our next campaign. Bum, bum, bum. Season 2. Directed by Scott. That's right. I'm going to be taking the guys on an adventure in a system that I don't think any of them have actually played before. Nope. nope. I've played uh, similar, but not exactly. <clears throat> We are going to be playing a Call of Cthulhu themed 
Savage Worlds campaign set in the modern day world, actually in Flagstaff, Arizona. The reason I picked Flagstaff is because I've lived there longer than anywhere else, and so I know the area the best. Now, it's changed a lot in the couple of years that I've not been there, but it's still going to be, you know, pretty accurate in that way I know where things are and how people interact there. So, setting it in Flagstaff, it's going to be kind of a mystery thriller type game. I'm hoping you guys like it, um, but that's what season two is going to be. And I think most of the guys have said they're pretty much going to be playing themselves with a little, a few tweaks here and there. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. So tune in next week so you can see us create ourselves and move to Flagstaff, Arizona. <laughs> or, or in case of those of you people who have just decided to start this new season, welcome. Try not to go crazy. Yeah. It's a fun ride. <laughs> I, I have played a couple of Cthulhu-styled games, so uh, I know Sanity Lost might be a big deal. Oh, yeah. So we'll see you next week. I also I wanted to t talk to you guys about how you can get involved on choosing the next pitch that we for the game that we're gonna play. Uh, the first one, of course, you guys didn't have a say because we hadn't broadcast anything. And this one, uh, the next game, well, we don't quite have the community involvement that we were expecting and hoping for for a number of reasons. But the next game, you guys, if you come go to our Patreon website which will be in the description of this video support us at the level that's appropriate and you guys will get to vote on the pitch that uh is going to get played next right on yay we will we will each be putting up different uh ideas each time and uh yep if you gm you don't get to give a pitch but everyone else is going to pitch something yeah and don't choose me right away because we'd have to create a whole new system first <laughs> We definitely choose him just because he said that. <laughs> it's the internet. Yep. Savages. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.